Hello everyone and welcome back to Minecraft our first few days. Um, we have, well I did a little bit of stuff off, off camera, I did a bit of mining uh, and I've, I've picked up a few more resources, quite happy with what I've got but the problem we has, have at the moment is we are running out of food, we're down to our last three chicken and we have this potato that I popped off a zombie which is one of the rarer foodstuffs so I'm, I'm hoping to keep hold of that but we can cook and eat that if we need to be and we've also have this rotten flesh which is the meal of last resort for any minecrafter you can eat the stuff and it will fill your hunger bar up a little bit but it also has the uh, the drawback of uh, uh, it, gives, it gives an effect called hunger, which am I hungry enough to try some? Let's have a look, see. No, I'm not. Okay. Um, yeah, hunger depletes your hunger bar down. So you can eat it, you can get your, your hunger up for a little bit, and that helps you redu uh, heal, your, heal yourself up. So in desperation, it's a good thing to have on your bar but um, it also makes you hunger quicker so the effects don't last for nearly as long it's not good food chicken is good food but we've got very little left so um, I've got I kept I, I kept a stack of each of the new stones and we've got basically a third of the stack left of iron and gold and those lovely four diamond ingots which I've not thought of what I'm going to do with yet and plenty of coal so we're actually in a pretty good situation here and what I want to do now is move on from this mining phase and I want to go back to the spawn point and make ourselves somewhere to uh, to shelter there okay and we've chosen a good time to do it because it's just become night time so these forests are going to start filling up with monsters which is going to give us a chance to practice our combat skills uh, but uh, first of all we need to work out where spawn is and to do that we press F3 and if you look down the left hand side you can see a line that says X, Y and Z we talked about this in the last episode but a recap never hurts we are at uh, X minus 279 and Z minus uh, uh, 100 Ooh, that sounds like we have a visitor hello Mr. Zombie welcome to the show there we go, grab a little bit more of that, and some experience. Okay, the zombies are going to start uh, joining us fairly soon, so we're going to have to make a, a, a move of this. What we need to do is move to the X and Z coordinates of the spawn point, which I happen to know um, from recording in, the, uh, in a previous episode, a minus 1, minus 44, which, as you can see, basically means we want to head in this direction. So. Let's deal with the skeleton in a sensible manner, which is to hide behind something. Forces them to come closely. And they are far less dangerous when you do that. So, right. Skeleton dead. Let's move on quickly. So, we'll bring up F3. I know it blocks the screen a little bit, but it's a, a very useful thing to have. And uh, as you can see, both the X and... Z numbers are moving towards the place the, the numbers we want. They can be walking right up to us, which is minus one and minus a 44. Uh, we shall just carry on heading in this direction. What I want to do is also keep an eye open for food. Hello, Mr. Chicken. Thank you. Any more chickens around here? Yep. We'll take that as eggs as well. They will. Oh, we're inventories full. What should we throw away? We shall throw away that gunpowder. That's not immediately useful for us. But uh, take these eggs, which actually could be useful for us. And we shall carry on heading in the direction we need to go. Um, this should be vaguely familiar to you guys. Uh, just cross over to the other side and you will see this is where in the first episode we cut our first cobblestone 
Oh, stuck under a tree there. And in the second episode, we shouted there for a little bit because there was lots of zombies in the area. So, let's pop down here and say hello to this place again. Light from our torches. And there's the hole we dug. So we now know we're very close. Actually, want to go a little bit in, the, in this direction. Oh, should we kill you? Uh, Let's kill you first. Baby zombies, the most annoying creature ever. Combat-wise, you deal with them more or less the same as you would adult zombie. Wait for them to come up to you and hit them as they get close. Oh, we have a little colony here. Let's deal with these quickly. You see, we we'll just wait for them to get close, and it's very hard for them to hit you. Creepers, if you remember, keep up close to them and apply pressure. That didn't work for us because that zombie hit us, and pretty much had the same effect. Okay, and I was going to say there's the last one. There's not. There's the last one. Uh, there's a spider behind us. Right, we're getting some practice here, aren't we? And skeleton. Get up close, they can't bother you. And spider. Another skeleton. We should really eat while that's getting close. And another one bites the dust. Right, let's get back to where we were. is we just want to go a little bit in this direction and this is where we spawned into the game okay what I want to do is first of all survive the night which we shall hopefully do And then in the morning, I want us to build something. And while I'm thinking about it, All right, so we'll eat a little bit more of our precious chicken here. This is down with one good meal. But what we can do is put down one of these furnaces and while we're waiting for morning we will cook up these two chickens. Get that bit of coal. That actually has the added bonus of giving us a touch of light. And yeah, it's nearly morning, so we're good. Okay, this is more or less the point where we're going to spawn in, and the spawn point is very important. There are a number of ways of setting your spawn point in the game. The most common one is using a bed, and if you sleep in a bed, it uh, creates a spawn point for you at that location. So uh, if you die uh, for any reason, then you will return to that point, the spawn point. But if for some reason it cannot spawn you wherever you set your spawn point, um, the bed has been destroyed, say, or you have it blocked for some reason or something like that, uh, then it will return you basically to the world spawn point, which is where you started into the game, which is right here. So it seems to me to be a good idea that if you have a spawn point which is a little way away from where you tend to play, which is probably going to happen here because I don't actually want to spend too much time in this actual biome, then it's a good idea to have a little house 
or something just to store some bits and pieces in so if ever you find yourself in this this area without any equipment you've got um, a store a place to sleep and um, some basic weapons just to get yourself back on your feet uh, and uh, uh, oh, did I just throw away that I threw away my sword that was silly and uh, you know, just a place to get organized now you can't build within 10 squares of your spawn point okay it's the, the the location is pretty pretty much in violet it's just it's to uh, stop player griefing from destroying the spawn point and things like that so what I'm going to do is because we have this river here which is a fairly obvious location what I'm going to do is I'm going to build down here which seems like a, a nice location to do so and there's a huge cave which we missed Uh, actually, is that a cave? Let's have a quick look. Yes, that's a big cave with lots of iron. Let's put some lights down here. Goes down and down and down and down and down. Comes to a dead end. Right, there seems to be plenty of iron down here, so I think what I will do is I will take the opportunity to steal all this and we'll. Um, cook this up in our furnaces and add that to our, our resources. It seems like a good a good idea. And there's plenty of coal here as well. Uh, okay, so it extends off in that direction too. So that seems like a good opportunity. We'll do that later on. Right now we need to focus on making ourselves a little space to live or at least visit and I think the first thing I want to do is clear off all the uh, trees around here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out now and I will come back when that is done right and here we are cleared it uh, out a little bit moved some of the trees I've mined down here cleared that area out of coal and iron and uh, filled in the hole a little bit so we've got a bit more space I'm just going to drop down a few torches just to light the area up a little bit so we are a little bit less zombie during the night and then I shall eat one of my precious fruit cooked chicken and uh, I'll just have a quick look at what we've got here and I think spruce wood and Cobblestone are going to be our building materials here. So take that. I wouldn't mind a little bit of sand. Oh, oh that's a snowball. There's some sand. Let's pick up some sand. Do I have? Yep, I have some space. No, if you're going to be sensible, you pick up sand with the shovel. And I'm going to use that to make some glass so we have some windows in our house. Not going to do much here. Incidentally, if you hit snow with a shovel, you get snowballs. The uh, weirdest things of the game here, they don't actually do any damage. I believe, unless you're the Ender Dragon. What can be thrown at each other? Get rid of these and let's start our build. Oh, yeah, uh, anyway, that's the uh, the iron we dug out there. That's that's cooking up nicely. That's going to add to our total. And when that's burned and cooked through, I shall add this sand there and make some glass. But okay, let's make ourselves a house just a simple little place. It's going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to uh, go to um compressed time now and I'll see you guys in just a second
Okay, there's the basic framework done. Doesn't look much like a, a, a place to stay at the moment, does it? That's because there's a few bits and pieces I need, I need to add to this, which uh, I want to cover with you guys. Uh, the first one of which is glass. And glass is really easy to make. You take sand and you smelt it. And uh, it takes a moment to chug through. And once it has chugged through, you get a block of glass. So we're going to get the, the, let these six cook through and we'll do something with that. The other thing I want to talk to you about is the doors and the, the door rather and the roof. So the door is quite simple to make. You use six pieces of wood. So we'll take some uh, wood planks like that and that gives us three spruce doors which is in all honesty a lot more than we want at this point but uh, um, we don't have much choice because it comes in threes and uh, my inventory is a little bit full here so let's place the door quickly so there's the door to our house and uh, one thing that we really do need to make quickly, thinking about it, is a chest. So let's do one of those quickly. I don't have quite enough wood, so let's take another set of those. I want that mushroom, but I don't want it right this second. So let's throw that out for a sec, and let's put down chest there let's put stuff in we don't immediately need and we don't want carrying around with this so a golden horse armor we don't need we don't need all this coal so that can stay in there don't need that stuff we definitely don't want to be carrying around those diamonds if we get a, a creeper explosion or something we don't want to die holding those and lose them so we just throw a few bits and pieces in here just to free up our inventory a touch and let's go and pick up the stuff we threw down here. Oh, hello. Any more of you guys? Yep. Eat Snowball Fiend. Knocks them back, but as you can see, it doesn't actually do any damage to them. Let's deal with you first because you are more dangerous. The speed of the uh, the baby zombies makes them much harder to deal with without taking damage, especially when there's other threats in the area. Okay, so right. Oh, we don't need those carry those doors around because we only want the one. So we'll stick those in the inventory, in the uh, the chest rather. We've got our glass. Now we can put glass blocks in. But uh, another very useful quick craft is if you take six blocks of glass and shred them out like that, you get in turn 16 glass panes. they just windows. So we'll put those in in place instead. But as you can see, they don't look quite so good because this door doesn't act like a block on either side. So we'll pop the one in there. But they won't work on the front like this so we'll stick those away go and grab ourselves a couple more panes of glass uh, a bit, bits of sand rather and we should just make two more glass blocks by the side of a river is a very easy place to find sand likewise deserts and mesas but seeing as we're in um, a cold tiger we're not going to find many deserts around here so we'll just stick those two bits of sand in there let that cook through and we shall knock these out as you can see when you can destroy glass or glowstone or things like that it actually shatters and you can't use it anymore so while that is cooking let's put a roof on and the roof i am going to use slabs now there's a reason for this uh, but first of all let me make a few 
So that's the recipe for slabs. Three um, planks across the bottom will give you six slabs. And slabs are rather interesting in the way they can place. Because they're half a height, you can place one at the top half of the block, or you can place one at the bottom half of the block. If you place two like that, oh, wrong one. Let's use the axe. Now wood, axe is the thing to uh, to use to cut them down. As you can see, when you try to um, use the axe to remove one half of the block, it will remove both of them all the time um, uh, at the same time. Because as far as it's concerned, the axe works on a block area. So there we go. You have a, a slab at the top of the block, a slab at the bottom of the block, and they have. In interesting properties by themselves. I mean, visually, it's fairly obvious this slab has got a block of space underneath it. Uh, but you can't put something else under there. So the only thing you can put in that space there is another um, half slab. So unless you want a space there, that's not really much use. So let's get rid of those. The slab on the bottom here has a very interesting uh, side effect. No monster can spawn at this point because this block here is filled with this half slab, but the space above it. So, if you think, there, there, um, as it can't spawn a monster here because there's a half slab in the space, it would try to spawn it in the space above, but it can't spawn in the space above because there's air underneath it. So what you can do is you can use half slabs placed in the bottom half of a block as a way of stopping mobs from uh, spawning in on a roof or things like that. So that is precisely what we're going to do here. And let's just pop one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go and get some more. Grab that glass as well. Okay, let's put that in our bar so we can place it up. Didn't put it in the bar, did I? Oh, okay. So, right, we have a little bit of a roof area here where mobs can't spawn. And we shall finish the job off by adding some torches. And that will illuminate the area enough to make sure that nothing spawns in this place. And finally, two blocks of glass in there and we have ourselves a quite quick but very cozy rough and ready spawn house and that is all you need let's get rid of some of this earth there we go just clear the area around here a little bit no particular reason just aesthetics and there we have our first little house and we've learned to craft a couple of extra bits and pieces so We have this potato here, which we can farm. And we should actually go and find some grass if we can, but this doesn't seem to be a good place to look for it, so we shall do that elsewhere. But what I want to do is I want to have a little bit of food here. So if we spawn in this area, we have the, the basics of a farm, so we can pick up some food and move on. So. What I need here is first of all to get rid of these snowballs like that and we shall make ourselves a hoe and the hoe is used to hoe the ground make it suitable for planting seeds or in this case potatoes that's the recipe so it's two planks across the top and two sticks going down by the way that works as well makes no difference so there we go we grabbed our uh, our hoe and we have a new achievement so what we're just, just going to do here is I've got two potatoes so I'm just going to hoe two pieces of land here you see how they changed and I'm going to plant a potato there oh I only had one potato sorry my bad and that one will grow 
and we can use it for food. And actually thinking about that, quick trick here. Bones can be used to create bone mill. And bone mill can be used to grow plants. Just like that. So that's done. We punch that. We now have four potatoes. So let's do repeat that trick quickly. Let's plant potatoes on the two of them. Bone mill the two. Punch and punch. And we now have six. Repeat that again. And like that, we're up to ten. Let's give ourselves a bit more spare land. So let's just do eight like that. Um, if land isn't irrigated and not planted on, we'll go deal with irrigation later on. Um, it will return back to ordinary land uh, quite quickly. Also, if something jumps on your uh, hoed land, including yourself, that happens. It turns back to ordinary dirt and whatever you planted there pops out. So try to avoid planting on your land. And also, if you're going to make a farm, you probably want to fence it off to stop things from getting in there. Right. Let's get this stuff picked up. Because we're going to want to move some of it now into our house. So grab that into our snug little cozy house and we shall put down a furnace and we shall put down a crafting bench oh. so furnace crafting bench and what I want to put down this side is a bed But uh, we don't have wool at the moment, and we don't have enough string. So before we move on, I'm probably going to want to uh, go string hunting. But I actually might not bother on that. As you can see, it's a bit rough and ready inside. It looks a bit horrible, but uh, you saw how quickly it was for me to make it. There's nothing stopping us now from taking a bit of time and making this look a bit better, which we can do now if you like. In fact, let's do it. So we'll just strip out this outer edge like that. And just fill it in. And, and to be honest with you, all you need to really do is fill it in with cobblestone. Bear in mind, this is not a place where your character is going to be living. It's just a, a temporary bolt hole to store a few bits and pieces and just stay safe from the elements if you actually have to spawn here, which in most of the time you're going to try to avoid doing. Uh, it's as simple as that. So yeah, it looks a little bit more uh, reasonable now. Okay. So we have two potatoes that we aren't, aren't farming, so let's cook those up quickly. So, you cook potatoes by popping them in the furnace. And what should we cook that with? Don't need those, so they can be used to refuel. And we shall pop this hoe in there because we no longer need to carry it about. And should do the same with the bone meal for the second. Let's get rid of that too, don't need to carry it around. Right. I want to just cover one quick recipe which is an excellent one to make here in these sort of areas where you get the two different colors mushrooms there's the brown mushroom and the red mushroom and if you can get the two of them there's a, a bit more of a complex recipe you can make called mushroom stew which is done the crafting bench you need three things you need a brown mushroom you need a red mushroom and you need a wooden bowl wooden bowls are made like this and that will give you four wooden bowls so we'll put that in there that in there and that in there gives us a bowl of mushroom shrew 
and we get the remainder bowls back. That's one of the best items of food you can get in the game. The drawbacks is they don't stack. So if you have two mushroom stews, it will fill up two spaces. In fact, let's find. See if we can find some brown mushrooms quickly to show you. I'm sure I saw some recently. Quick look around here. I said brown mushrooms, not skeletons. Bit light on the mushroom front. Okay, never mind that. I shall show you later on. Right. We don't have um, a bed, so we're going to have to wait it out until morning, which I think is what I'm going to do here. I'm going to cut out here. I'm going to hide and hide in our little cabin here. Actually, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to put some lights up in our little cabin here. And I'm going to wait until morning. You don't have to wait with me, so I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, it's day. It's snowing. And I took the time overnight to bone meal up and harvest all these uh, potatoes at least once. And I cooked the spare ones. So we actually have 12 cooked potatoes along with our two cooked chicken and our bowl of mushroom stew. So our food problems are no longer a problem. And I took our iron and... I made a spare set of uh, iron tools and I made a spare set of iron armor and I'm going to leave that here because if I die and I find myself back here this is the stuff I'm going to need to get back to where my stuff is and make the most of it so let's just get rid of uh, a few little bits and pieces we don't really want kill him because we don't really want him. There we go. Finally got rid of him. Let's just get rid of a bit of junk. Uh, so we don't need this andesite and diorite at the moment. So we'll keep those eggs. Keep the music disc and string. That doesn't give us much space in our inventory. But all the stuff we got there is vaguely useful. So that... We get our health up, our, our food up to full, which will get our health up to full, and we shall say goodbye to our spawn house because hopefully it will be a long time before we see it again. And I'm going to end the episode there. Next episode, we shall do some traveling, probably a little bit more crafting, look at a few different recipes, and uh, go looking for a place where we're actually going to want to make a proper base. Until then, I have been Simon Parsons. This has been Minecraft the first few days. Thank you and good night.